So what do you understand by um, poverty? By poverty. What do you understand by the word poverty? I can say that poverty is simply like the lack of basic need. And that was who I used to be. So this is my story. While I was growing up, um, it was quite difficult for me because I remembered vividly my mom do send us to the bedroom to pick up soap in order to bathe. The experience was very painful because it put tears in my eyes when I remembered. And I see this strong woman moving through tides. And then, before you know, she started investing. Then I asked myself, if this woman can do this with this income she's earning, then there must be something that is different. And I was told, when you get to the university, there are jobs waiting for you after you got out. <laughs> oh, God. So what happened then? She sent us to school, but one thing is, I want to tell you, education is very expensive. Whether you are paying $800 for a study at FUTA or $80,000 for a study at Advan, it doesn't matter. The truth is, school doesn't guarantee you a job. I will repeat, school doesn't guarantee you a job. Because the thought was, when I come to school, at the end of school, there will be a company waiting for me and said, Emmanuel, you graduate with either a first class or a second class opa, there is a job waiting for you. That wasn't true. And that shocked me when I had to go for internship and submit letters to quite a lot of companies. <laughs> and I was like, God, what was happening? So when Futa handed the IT letter, other people were like, I have an uncle to call. They can just make a call and connect me. And I'm like, I don't have anybody. So I had to go through the hard part. Through the hard part, learning, committing myself to learning for months. And one thing is, whatever you learn, when you put it into practice, it pays off. In the long run, in the space of six months, I got an unpaid job. I was happy because others have someone they can call. Myself, I was able to secure a job. It was a milestone. And down through the line, I moved across working with top companies in Nigeria. And then I got bored of Nigerian startup. I said, let me try something different. And I started branding myself. And he became a brand. Companies across India, they started reaching out. Emmanuel wants you to work for us. We love what you're doing. Can you just do marketing for us? And that was where it all happened. So I had connections far and wide, but these were built from scratch. Talking about connection in US, in the director working in US, that is Google. Talking in Microsoft, Amazon, to name but a few. It got to an extent that even the company I was rejected from, they started calling and I was like, I'm not interested. And that's just the beauty about it. So this is just my story of how I moved from that being a guy who picked soap from the bedroom to bait others to one who could take and afford anything he wants. And that's just it. But this passes through process. So I want to tell you, this is not just a sweet story because there are efforts and this took me three years to build. And definitely I'm still a student here, but there is one thing that singled me out, putting the work and then getting it that, oh, I'm going to get my result out of it. And today I work with one of the top three leadership coach in the world, which is Robbie Sherman. Apart from that, I work with the United Nations and I work directly with the African coordinator. And it's been like a good moment, but these are what I passed through. So I'll be giving you tips on how I was able to get here. Because the journey from where I started from to this part is really hard. And this was what I really did. The first thing, I want to tell you this. In order to get out of poverty, because according to World Bank Group, they said, if you are living below $1.19 per day, you are extremely poor. <laughs> if you are living $3.20 per day, mid poor. If you are living $5.50 per day, you are still poor. That is according to the data. And surprisingly, according to World Bank Group, over half a million of the world population are poor then what can be done? This comes to the team, what next?
And this is what you can do because this is broken into two parts on how the world can eradicate poverty. The first is, what can you do as an individual to eradicate and to come out of poverty? And then, what can the world do? This is the principle which I applied, and it has been applied by over 10,000 people across five countries in Africa, across Europe, and then Asia. And these people got the same results. Over 100 of thousands have gotten decent job. When I mean decent, decent jobs are jobs that are able to pay all the bills, provide job security, they provide social protection, and then you are mentally stable even in that work. That's just my simple definition of decent job. And this is the first thing. The first thing you need to do is to get an employable skill. No company will pay you, and this is the truth which I realize, because you have an uncle working in India. No, I run an organization. I can't call in my brother because he's my brother to come in and sit in the top board or in the leadership position because he's my brother. No, I will call someone that has value to offer. Somebody say value. value. Say value. So this is where employable skills come in place. Value to offer. And you need to know that no matter your circumstances now, no matter your situation, if I can do it, you can do better. That's just it. Because one thing you need to learn a skill isn't just resources. It is passion. It is really passion. I remember what I was collecting in a month, <laughs> around 4,000 era in a month. And I was still purchasing online courses. So I can transit into the tech industry, and then I will be of value. In the first year, I didn't pay off. In the second year, I started paying off. In the third year, I blown. That's just the truth. So you need to first get an employable skill. And one way you can get an employable skill, because I see people these days, my friend is learning software engineering, then it seems there is an earthquake in software engineering. Let me dive into it. Software engineering might not be for you. So the first thing, you need to map your passion to that skill, which is highly demanded by employers out there. How do you do that? There are various career assessment websites out there. So what they help you do is they match your passion to a trending skill and then guide you on how to learn these skills. The second thing which you need to do in order to get out of poverty after learning a skill is to create a portfolio. Somebody say portfolio. Portfolio is simply a collection of your projects, of your works that shows results to that employer that over the time, this and this and these are the things I've been able to achieve. I've managed hundreds of thousands of dollars as a campaign in marketing, in where I work. And then when I put this out in employer, they say, oh, you are very valuable. And please, can you take this? I'm like, sorry, my what is above this? I can't take this. Can you offer this instead? That is where salary negotiation comes in. So there are various sites out there which you can use to make a portfolio. And this is why I advise. Because then when I was starting, my dream in 100 level was to graduate in school. And then automatically, I start earning the sum of 500,000. <laughs> But when the school passed through me, I knew even 10,000 <laughs> is not possible. But that was then. That wasn't now because I ain't even far more than that. So this is just it. When you create a portfolio, it's a sign to show that employer that, oh, I'm valuable. Let's take an example. If I tell Dr. Sonny, sorry, and I said, let's say he's trying to get... Um, He's trying to get top entrepreneurs in Akure. Then I said, oh, in my past project, I've been able to work with various top entrepreneurs. And then we converted these entrepreneurs. And in the space of six months, they were able to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars and over a million dollars proceed. And then I can help you source out for entrepreneurs. Doctor, will you hand me the contracts? Definitely, that is it. So that is what portfolio does. It gives you a leverage. And then when you have a portfolio, the next is to create a resume. Yeah, I use resume for my conferences out there because I mostly speak with those in the Europe and others. But a resume in this context is called a CV, curriculum vita. Now, once you have this, it's just a collection of what you can do. Sell yourself using this trick. What is the contest? What have you done in the time past? What was your achievement? And then what result? Like mine, I said, I was able to increase email marketing by over 900% increments, which added thousands of dollars to the organization. 
in the space of two months. That was what got me my first company, which is the Nigerian startup. And the next was, oh, I was able to manage an extensive email marketing list over 80,000 campaigns. And then these were converted into paying customers and led the company into raising an $80,000 seed funding. That got me my second company, which is the Switzerland-based company. So that is what Resume can do. The fourth is apply for jobs. Jobs don't come to you. Please, connections are good, but connections doesn't guarantee jobs, seriously. Because I know of an uncle that told me years ago, four years ago, Emmanuel, after I die, I'm going to hand over my property to you. If I'm still waiting, <laughs> I'll still be broke to now. But then I said, no, I'm not waiting for him. I'm going to create my own path. I'm going to come up and turn my challenges into an opportunity because that is simply it. And then that is simply what this application do. You put your foot out of the door. If recruiter isn't reaching out to you, reach out to them. They want to talk to you. CEOs of company wants to talk to you. They have a problem. You have a solution. So you have a solution to their problem. And then what do you use to present? Your resume. And the next, after applying, then you have interviews. You have interviews for this job, and then you convert. Now, once you use these various steps, and I hope you're able to jot something down, you will be able, in due time, overcome poverty. any far above $5.50 per day. I've done that. I've gone beyond that. I've trained hundreds of people to get that. And then this doesn't require degrees, seriously. And these people which have been trained, countless of people are underserved. They are underrepresented. Who doesn't have a school certificate? I remember the recent one, Samuel. He got a job in a US company. It's just an ND1 order. And what it came, it came to me and said, Emmanuel, um, my roommate is currently a Yahoo guy. I don't want to do this, but I need something that will sustain me. I said, can you commit three months? And he said, definitely I can commit. Okay, let's go on this. In the space of one month after working, it was increased to 200. It's as simple as that. Principles work. Then to the second part, what can the world do to overcome poverty? What can the world do to overcome poverty? I've talked about what individuals can do, laying down what works for me, what has worked for 100 others, and what has worked for those who have been able to mentor. Now, what can the world do? But let me say this. Jobs alone isn't the way to get out of poverty. There are numerous. So the major thing is, this is where the second part we cover. The first thing the world can do, and which is the most paramount to overcome poverty, is kindness. What did I say? Say kindness. kindness. Kindness is simply this. It's simply helping those who are in need. Not giving out money. Money doesn't solve poverty. That's why when I see relief program giving out money, hundreds of thousands, no matter if you give out an hundred thousand or a million to someone that hasn't started something, that just need a boost to get up, before you know the money will run down and you will get back to school. And so money, giving out money doesn't conquer poverty. So where does kindness come from? Remember I said 3.5 billion people, that is half of the world population, live in poverty. Not extreme poverty, please don't quote me wrong. Poverty. But that means that another half of the world population live above poverty. And they are well to do. So now, this is the principle which we made. Now, if these people who live above poverty can take out just one person and mentor the person, teaching the person what he does or what she does to get to the level which he or she is currently, and that single person can come out of poverty. And this continue all about, I can boldly tell you, before the year 2030, the world will be completely eradicated of poverty. That is simply what kindness can do. That is simply what kindness can do. So now this is a true-off to us in the room. If you are above the poverty line, take it upon yourself, commit it upon yourself, and say, oh, I want to help someone out there to get out of this stage of poverty. Because no one is happy when he or she lacks basic need. When you can't call a lawyer when you have an issue. Where you can't call on a bank. Like a friend told me, he said something happened, he was debited, and he can't hire a lawyer to fight his financial institution. 
If anything happens in my bank, I just call my account manager. What's happening? Please, I need this rectified. And in the space of days, it's rectified. It's as simple as that. If you can do this to one, two, three people, I can tell you that before 2030, the world will be out of poverty and poverty will be no more. And this is the beauty of this. When this is done, everyone will appreciate its beauty, the world, and people will be prosperous. There will be peace. There won't be gender violence. There won't be strife. Climate action will be depreciated because most people that cause climate change and pollution to the weather are people that contribute highly. That is from the local reserve. That burns, for example, coal. You burns dead, and this degrade the ozone layer. Now, if this can be done, poverty can be eradicated. 70% of the world's problem will be definitely er eradicated. So I want to ask you now, what are you going to do from now on? What's next for you? If you are living below the poverty range and you want to climb high, what's next for you? Are you going to put into practice this principle and then get out? Even though someone isn't helping, you can help yourself. Get out of that. Now, if you have the affluence and then you are able, Will you take up people, mentor people, to become who you are? Because the greatest level of impact you can make is transferring your personality and your success to others. And that's the world we appreciate. And I will round up with this. That the world appreciates those that are able to lay mark even after departing. I want to thank you so much for listening. Thank you.